This is just going live on Facebook. We are quite IT savvy, really. Uh, just let that do its thing. And if somebody could check the Facebook and see if it is working, that would be good. Now, that is Facebook. Let's go back to Zoom. So many things to know about. Welcome everybody and people that are on Facebook Live, if you've joined in the last second. <laughs> um, this is our first face-to-face -face meeting this year. We used to get about 80 people, but it's all, you know, with COVID a bit different. So I, I think um, online might end up being the way to go. Acknowledgement of country. Bowdoin Valley Community Council acknowledges the Ngunnawal people as the traditional owners of this land and their continuing connection to land and community. We pay our respects to their cultures, ancestors and elders, past, present and future. All right, so today what we are going to get on with is we're just going to have a little look at the Mr. Fluffy Blocks. We've spent a lot of time in the past looking at the um, town centre and the densification of the town centre or the towers, the loss of the recreation facilities, the, the tragedy of the town square it could be, shouldn't say that, but it could be active around it, could be better. It's got potential, so much potential. Um, and so today we're going to have a little bit of a look at the Mr. Fluffies and also the, just a little look at the CIT. So we'll see how that goes. So we might just launch straight into it if I can do it. Can people at Rolla, can you see that? So let's see what happens if I do that though. I'm not sure that that's quite right. What are we seeing? Hmm. It's not quite right, is it? I can see all your files. Just don't want to see my all my thingies. That's not quite right. There's Mr. Fluffy. Uh, I'm going to do that again. Actually. Oh, well. we'll go with it. Um, so the ACT government is undertaking a planning review. You may have all heard about that. It talks to population growth. So this is just a snippet from their website. Canberra is growing each year and the ACT government is carefully planning for its growth. A modern planning system uh, is important to deliver on our vision of a livable and sustainable city. We want a planning system that is focused on delivering outcomes for the residents of Canberra. So the new planning system is going to be outcomes based, not so much in a planning code with rules and criteria as we have now, but more outcomes based. And I guess that's uh, what I want to talk to with the Mr. Fluffy's blocks, you know, the outcomes that we're getting. And I know that they were a special case. Um, but we'll get to it. Um, so there's a purpose is to deliver a planning system that is clear and easy to use. Like it is true, our current planning system and the codes are pretty tricky to find your way around them. And it's taken me a fair while on the surrendered blocks for Mr. Fluffies. Um, the objectives of the planning review to enable the sustainable growth of our city without compromising its valued character. Uh, providing clarity of processes, roles and outcomes for the city's community, providing flexible assessment pathways that are appropriate to the scale and scope of the development. So scale and scope, all those things, you know, people talk about our bush capital. We love our bush capital. They're the sort of things you hear. So currently, um, uh, let's see, this, this is the, this is the, 2018, um, the latest planning policy for the ACT government, it was released in 2018. And these, can I move this? No. Anyway, what the legend says under there is that all these purple bits are, hello, 
Miss Marissa, she's our, one of our MLAs for our electorate. Thank you for coming, Marissa. Um, so the purple bits are the areas that are being looked at for, I'm not sharing the screen. Oh, I have to press share. See if that's better. Huh? Press share. Hopefully that works. See, that's why you need somebody to look. <laughs> Did you just join Facebook? <laughs> um, anyway. So the purple bits are the, the areas that uh, have been identified to intensify, which means densification. So this one, as a part of the planning review, there'll be new legislation, which I understand is coming out reasonably soon. Uh, and so we'll all comment on that. And with the new legislation will be new codes, I understand, for the planning and there will be district level plans, which is what we're obviously interested in, the district level plan. So in our district level plan, these areas here were highlighted for densification or for to look at intensification. The, that's the area in there around the town centre and around the transport corridor, around Mawson, around Curtin. That was to be expected. When it went, the tender went out, it actually included the whole of Woden, aside from the eastern side, Isaacs, O'Malley and Garran. So this is from the tender documents. So, you know, the transport corridor through here and all of Curtin and Lyons and Torrens and Farrah and Mawson and Chifley. Anyway, I guess you've got to look and see what potential there is out there. Um, so I guess, what's that one? Oh, things have got out of order. I'll just wing it. Um, this report, the Climate Change 2022 report came out yesterday or was it the day before, recently? Uh, in it, you know, there's not much. Um, well, not much, it's over 3,000 pages, but one snippet, <laughs> one snippet said, urban greening using trees and other vegetation, vegetation can provide local pooling. And I liked the bit about the natural river system too, given we've got our concrete um, Yarralumla Creek, we're forever, you know, like talking about naturalizing some part of it, maybe the Mawson end, as opposed to the Curtin end where the water all gathers, but um, the curtain end would be good. I don't know what these ones are. Oh, okay, they're pickies. So I was in Sydney on the weekend seeing Houghton, and this is a street in Camperdown. Camperdown is pretty central Sydney, inner west, and look how beautiful it is. I was like, wow. And you can go down streets in our, probably more our, um, Older, more established suburbs will have great trees as opposed to the newer suburbs. And maybe they will grow in the newer suburbs, but they don't seem to have quite the, the footprint, the space to allow this sort of thing. So I guess what we thought um, we might do, we've been thinking about it for a little while. I couldn't help it. I have a Mr. Fluffy next door and across the road and, you know, that old saying, you never pay much attention until it happens to you, is certainly true. I mean, I have focused so much on the town centre. I didn't even put in a submission about the one next door. And then when I started seeing it, um, the ground floor rising above the fence line, mm -hmm. and now the foundation is over two metres high, <laughs> the foundation is higher than the fence line. I was like, what? Hang on a sec. <laughs> um, so you need to pay attention to what is going on around you. So um, how can I move? Oh, good at, look at that. I can move them along. So can you see that? Oh, can I make it bigger? 
Oh, I can. So I've just, you know, gone into um, Act Mappy. I've got all the Mr. Fluffy blocks and I have just taken little snips of all the Mr. Fluffy blocks. Well, not all of them yet. I've done probably half of Woden. I've done Chifley, Torrens, Curtin, uh, a few suburbs. But anyway, you can see with the law, with a Mr. Fluffy block, when they changed the law, they called them surrendered blocks for Mr. Fluffy. Uh, ooh, if my images come back, uh, I may have some stuff here before we go into all those images of what they look like. Hmm. Um, so the special provisions for Mr. Fluffy blocks. So the red is just trying to highlight the point. So if you've got a 700 metre Mr. Fluffy block, it went from 800 to 700 metre, you could dual occupancy it. Um, a dual occupancy basically means that you it's like a unit, it becomes unit titled under the Unit Titled Act where you have multiple dwellings on one block. So it is still one block, um, but you have multiple dwellings. So they can sell their place, but it's still one block. The whole block isn't subdivided. So if you have, it said, if you have two dwellings facing onto the street, your plot ratio is 50%. And if they're sitting behind each other, they're 35%. And if they're both the, um, facing onto the street, so they're like, you'll see them all over the place. They're like long, skinny, terracy sort of things facing onto the street, uh, you can have two stories if you've got that. And it's like, oh my God, there are ways to like, so there are outcomes that, so they're, they're, they're the sort of changed rules for the surrendered blocks. They went from 800 to 700, you could dual occup occupancy. They went from 35 to 50%, 50, 35 to 50% plot ratio, which is how much livable area, like house, you can have. Um, but the multi-unit housing development code still applies and you still need to achieve desired character. You have to have a reasonable separation between the properties, the dwellings, reasonable privacy for the adjoining residential blocks, um, reasonable um, privacy for principal open space, now, I know that uh, there's so many mixed views on all these things. When it comes to development, some people don't want any. Some people are happy for any development. Some people are like, any development is good development. But I think there's a balance in there somewhere where we do develop, we do densify, but we do it in a way that's not so imposing on um, the people around. So, um, there are other parts, I've got one a bit easier. Let's just see, this is about landscape. You're supposed to have trees, a mature height of four meters, energy efficiency, shade in summer. Um, I guess I'm just quickly trying to, you know, without getting into a code, which is pretty full on, the, you know, the details of the code, making the point that there, are, you still have to apply um, the, the, open space, the overlooking, the character, all those sort of things when a development is being considered. So one of them is like for RZ1, not less than 40% of the total site area is allocated to communal open space, minimum dimensions of two and a half, um, not less than 20% of the total site area is planting area. So you will see when I show you these images, like some of these things, it's really hard to see how these things actually um, got through by and applying these things, these criteria and, and rules. And I guess we just want to have a look at it in the context of the planning review coming up. If these are the sort of outcomes that the government is happy with, then when we go to an outcomes-based model, these are the sort of outcomes that the government is happy with and that we're going for, yeah? Just, 
Would you hear Caroline then? Special rules. Special rules for Fluffy being the 700 and the plot ratio and the yeah, two yeah. stories. So there were some special rules for surrendering, but then it still had to apply the multi development code and have those character and overlooking and some. Um, yeah, I don't know how it works. And then here, the private, this is the principal private open space. Yeah, I know, and I'll show you how they did it. But so, for example, here, um, like as I've got next door, there's two four beddies, and then across the road, two four beddies. So there's sixteen bedroom, um, eight bedrooms on the block next door. So anyway, four two four bed two four bedroom places. So the minimum area should be forty five square meters with a minimum dimension of six meters. Now, I reckon there's a lot of these four bedrooms going in because they're cramming in the bedrooms as well, small bedrooms. Anyway, so this just gives you a bit of context of um, the whole thing. So let's just run through what some of them are looking like. And obviously I've picked out the ones that um, are pretty full on as far as taking up all the space. I did have their what suburb they were in, but that's all of these are in Woden. These ones, um, I seem to have lost where the um, where they were. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go, up in the top. That one's Chifley. So you've got a bit of space, open space here, but what you'll find is it's paved because it's driveway. Um, this one. Is Chifley too? I suppose there's, you know, a little bit of room down there. Can't imagine it would get much sun. Um, come back. Oh, I've lost them all. There they are. Oh. And this one next door, I think that's another one. So. You know, you start getting more and more of them in a row. Um, hmm. This is not the easiest way to do this, is it? Where do they go? Come back. Come back. Oh, well, I'll get rid of us. Oh, there they are. Um, now that one's in Curtin. I know that one. And it's actually raised along here. So ground level, the footpath is now halfway up the fence. So when you when you walk down this skinny little fence here, it's at about the fence, the top of the fence is at about knee height, and it all looks over there, and there's four whopping big air conditioners here going. Rrr. Um, that one looks like it's hot. So what you can't tell from these pictures is actually how tall they are. And that's another issue. This is one of my favorites, Torrens. Um, and I've got photos of the poor people that live on the south side of this, or actually they live on the north side of it. Because what happens is, and I'll show you, the, the, because, you know, like a lot of the areas are on a slope, so they're getting lifted up to be flat. And so the foundations are like huge. They're, you can have a 1.8 metre foundation, but then you can also dig down and you get doors in, in the foundations, rooms in the, and their foundations. And so this particular one, these, and this is how they get away, you know, you say, okay, so how can that be a 50% plot ratio? Um, but what happens is there's a big alfresco dining areas in there and the alfresco dining area, although under the roof line, um, is not considered to be part of the plot area. 
So that's how they get away, I think, with one reason. Yeah. Yeah. So all this under here won't be part of the plot area. So they pretty much take up the whole blocks. Um, and there's plenty of them out there. Like you have the walk away from your hand. Yeah. A lot of people have ejected, I'm sure. The thing is, you know, like when we mentioned the cooling and the tree canopy, these places don't leave much space for tree canopy or permeable. You will you will not find much permeable area on these blocks. It's all it'll all run off down the stormwater and down Yarralumna Creek. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just, you know, we've got um, over a thousand of these now and they're not all as bad as that. Some of them, assumably the owner has bought it back and built a house on with the backyard, um, but it's going, you know, in the future with the planning review, we need to ensure that we'd still have permeable area, private open space, place for kids to play, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, so this is sort of, this is how, so this is ground level going down here. This is the fence line going down here. So this is the top of the fence here. But that's now the ground level. That's the big concrete slab goes out like that. It's well above ground level. And, you know, they don't leave much room around the sides of them. So they're sitting up there. This is the one next to me. And not only, not only you think, oh, because it comes right down to the fence line. Uh, there's going to be a pool. Now there's a DA in for pool, two pools on this block at the back, and it will go into the easement under the under the power lines. Um, and this part here, you know, okay, you so say 2.4 metres, you've got two storeys at the front and then one all the way through the block. Um, but that's not just your 2.4, that's five metres. So you're already sitting up high and then you've got five metres on top of that. So you end up with these absolute monstrosities. <laughs> it's just like, what? There goes my eastern view of the mountain. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so I guess I do have some more pickies. I don't know where they've gone. Don't quite know how to get them. But um, anybody want to have comments about that? Do it on there. So... Well, look, I asked the guy who did the architect drawing for this one, and he said that, you know, they're extracting as much as they can out of the block. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you are. Um, so if I could just go back, because I've got pickies of, how did I get there? Back. Oh, well, this is just one place with the now fresco dining. That's two new places. Looking over, that's just down the road. That's in Torrens. Um, where did all the pickies go? So this is just some of the pickies. So these are the slabs that the back, the house over the back is in there. There's one where you can see the the um, see. This is the fence, and there's a door there. You see that door? That's all foundation. So the foundation is higher than the fence line. That's the door in the foundations. And that's not on any of the plans at all. Nowhere will you see a door in the foundations. 
I did. I, I put it, I said, you know what, there's a door in there. It's not in the plans. And they're like, oh, it's the foundations, that's okay. <laughs> I was like, oh. Um, so anyway, I think I've made my point about um, Mr. Fluffies. And I could keep um, getting more examples, but I think that Yeah. That's what we're heading for. So this is the contract I showed you before that they're looking at densifying all of Woden apart from those eastern suburbs, but all of the western side. Um, you know, this is an investigation. Um, see, it says there, territory short form contract. That's part of urban infill capacity assessment. Study area. So this is the study area for, of this consultancy to have a look at the urban infill capability assessment. So. You know, what can we, how much can we infill? Um, I, so we want to ask for a review of the Mr. Fluffy. You know, how did that, you know, you've just demolished and replaced a thousand, a thousand plus places in RZ1 and RZ2 in the suburbs. How did that go? What are the lessons learned? How can that inform the new planning system that they're going to put in place? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. So it's not so much about them, it's about the rest of these places. Sorry. Yeah. You know, like once you start, if the law allows every block in RZ1 to end up like that, is that what we want? Um, I don't know. So. Yeah. It's a really good point because now you see people going, you can see these big places all around you. Hawker Street in Torrens has got the most Mr Fluffies of any street. There's about nine or something on that one street. And so then it's a bit like, well, why can't I do that too on my block? So it's salt and pepper planning whereby it's like dartboard planning where those ones can do that but the rest of you can't. Yes, and that's right. And that's where, like, you know, I made the point at the beginning, you still have character and overlooking and private open space considerations that I can't see how they're being considered. Hang on, I've got a chat. No space for any trees to reduce the CO2. That's right. Pri, can Hi. you? We couldn't hear Rollo before, so let's see if we can hear you. Can you hear me now? No. no. I don't know if it's me or you. <laughs> I can hear Pre. Chat, Pre. We can't. We've got a problem. Pre, it's Rollo. Can you hear me? Yeah, Rollo, I can hear you. If I start right. fiddling around with things. Up. How strange. Can you? Oh, dear. 
What a bummer. Oh, um, Nick, can you get the um, the cord for the laptop to plug it in before <laughs> it loses its sound? Sound. Volume. Pre, can you put it on the um, chat? That's annoying, isn't it? So anybody else want to, if you've got anything, Evan? So, all right. Pre, oh, here we go. There we are, can everybody read that? I was just going to say that calling for review is a good idea, asking for an analysis of how the program has gone. How did it go? <laughs> very good, thank you very much. <laughs> um, well, that's right. Um, there is a housing crisis. And as I say, we don't wanna say we don't wanna develop. We do wanna develop. I mean, we do want affordable housing. People have got to live somewhere. So we're not anti-development by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a good point, Pre. Do we know what proportion of Mr. Fluffy Box went dual occupancy? No, I don't, Evan. I don't. I mean, we could do our own analysis. We could go through them all. Sometimes it's hard to tell because there's a bit of a common roof line. Um, exactly. We want affordable housing that has local amenity and leads to healthy lives. We do. That's our local amenity. That is one of the issues that we talk about a lot, about, um, you know, meeting places, aquatic centre, <laughs> basketball stadium, art centre. That's right, and that's why we're saying there needs to be a balance. You know, sure, densify the town centre, but make sure we've got good public spaces that are active and the town centre is active. Make sure we've got um, things to do, you know, things that attract us to the town centre, places to meet. It doesn't all have to be cafes. You know, not everybody can afford to go to a cafe. Well, we have lost a lot. We've lost a lot. Well, do you know what? I spend more time. I spend more time in Tuggeranong Tugger now because my two fellows love basketball, so we're forever going to the basketball stadium. And I love swimming, so I go to the Tuggeranong pool. When I'm there, I then slip in and I do my shopping. Um, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And then public transport's not going to take you everywhere that you need to go. I mean, we're supposed to have a hub, and what we, that's what we say. We want an active hub. <laughs> And it should be active, not only, you know, with the recreation, the culture, all that sort of stuff, but also the streets, you know, like this is something that we're going to come up against. We've been talking about active and the recreational, the loss of the recreational facilities and the, and the green space a lot over the last five years. Um, but if we're going to have safe streets, like in the town centre, if people are going to feel safe when they come out of their tower and they want to walk around, at the moment, it's like when you go through the town square at night time, you look over your shoulder. Yeah. 
somebody in the back. Yes, and so we need activity where where cafes and bars and restaurants and stuff open up onto the street and there's people walking and moving through the place. So you can, um, and we don't have that. And one of our big problems that we will get to um, over the coming months is the internalisation. So on a Saturday night, there will be a lot of people in Woden. They're all inside the Hellenic Club and inside here. And so you can't see them. There's nothing active on the streets much. You've got the Eight Street and the Albi, thank goodness for that. Um, and you have the Karina side, the restaurants over there. But there's nothing that draws you through from one active place to another. Um, so it needs really good planning. Yeah. There's nobody ever in the, at the reception ever. <laughs> yeah, parking is getting harder and harder. And actually, if we um now let's just get this. Uh, here's Ian, we can and should have both housing and trees. Why are the regs not being adhered to by the ACT government itself? Agree, we should be able to have houses and trees. Uh, Chris, the same principles of good design outcomes should apply regardless of if it's a dual occupancy or single house on a block. McMansions, i.e. not building boundary to boundary. Um, all right, so are we in furious agreement that we should have permeable space and trees? So there is, um, yeah. And that was all just so to, to play for development. This is the way to talk about it. We have no really interest in getting a, a proper planning. And that's what we do. Yeah. And so that's why we want to keep our monitor or be involved or be able to have a view, try and influence the new planning legislation and code so that it does have the permeable space. So there was a draft variation to the territory plan done up. It's called DV369 and it's about having 30% permeable space on your block and 30% tree canopy. But it's just sitting around doing nothing. I don't know. Um, maybe you can follow that one up, Risa, and find out what's happening with DV369 and when it will be introduced and passed would be um, really good. Because while it's not... Um, yeah, and so maybe, you know, having a... Look, a us trying asking for a review is just a way of trying to get it on the radar, you know, keep it inactive. And Inner South are very good. They are um, they've done the same thing. So you can see how I've done all these little snippets of um, the blocks. They've done the same thing for the Inner South suburbs. So they can tell um, the same story. So shall we move on to the next subject? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Just 
These ones won't open up. That's a shame. Never mind. Um, all right, then. Let's move on and we will try and call for a review and see how we go. Um, oh, they're just taking a long time to load. Right. So what I want to do, if I can, is move us on to just look at some of the CIT stuff. I did ask if, oh, Pri, did you want to say something again? Your hand's up. No. Oh. oh, that looks grim, doesn't it? Okay, so I'll just get that out of the way. Just find. I don't know if I should be stopping sharing and I think I need Zoom lessons. Oh, maybe I'll just stop sharing and see if I can get it up. Hello, everyone. There we are, that's CIT stuff. So we will go back to Zoom and share some of this stuff. Uh, I did, probably repeating myself here, I did ask if, um, which one will I share, that one? did ask if, um, I have asked a few times if the ACT government could talk to us about the CIT and, and the What have I done? I don't know what I've done. Let's try and share the screen again. All right. Um, but they're not keen to come about either the bus interchange or the CIT. There was an information session in December last year at Canberra College where the ACT government ran through a number of projects, the CIT, the hospital, the light rail, the bus depot, the library upgrade. Maybe there was more. There was, they did run a few, few, a few things at a pretty high level and we sort of got to ask a question at the end. Uh, like, so I'm just going to, all right, why don't we start off with my favourite? <laughs> Can't help it. Well, the thing is, this is the Grand Central here. So tell me, look at the shadow. What time of the day do we get a shadow or the year? coming from the southeast like that. So that would be the morning in the middle of summer. Early in the morning in the middle of summer. Very early in the morning. Sunrise. The sun must have just come up to get an angle like that in the middle of summer. In the peak height of summer. What we really want to see is what is it going to be like for most of the year when the sun comes from the north, from this direction, and this building overshadows the whole thing. Oh, this one shows it a bit more. See how it's all shady in there? Um, so I guess what my problem with these images is that 
none of them ever show us what Woden will look like in the future, what we are planned for. So this particular thing here, that was the old post office. That's now a whopping big hole in the ground and is going to be 24 storeys. This courtyard thing is no longer there. That's now the wonder, that's a car park, residence car park, and it's got a childcare in it. This is zoned for 28 storeys. This is zoned for 28 storeys. This is zoned for 28 storeys. This is all zoned for 16 storeys and is on the land release program. This is the car park that the Hellenic Club want to enclose completely. Um, so it just doesn't give a clear picture of where we're going with all this. That's why they won't come along and talk to us because we ask. <laughs> Here, it's down here, sort of further down. That's the YMC, uh, the youth centre. And there will be a lot of traffic moving through here because you've got two trams and then see you've got buses sort of parked along here. So there'll be, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, well, there's nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bus stops on each side and then buses try trying to move through and then people trying to cross to get in. So cross, crossing here, crossing here, crossing here. Assumably you can cross there. I think you can. Hmm. It's going to be very busy in peak hour when you've got all, assumably all the buses from Tuggeranong will have to come in here because otherwise the Tuggeranong residents will have to catch a bus to Erindale and then catch a rapid from Erindale to Woden and then catch a bus, I mean, the tram into the city and then catch a bus if they go to UC. Who's going to do it? So they're going to have to bring the buses straight into here from Tuggeranong. It's the only hope of getting people to transfer once if they go to the city. But people will not transform more than once for a 15K trip. So these are the things that, um, you know, we bring up. But, um, you know, the, and I'll get to some. But note this how tight it is here. Um, the DA said, could you show us a turning template? So all the buses from the south. They're not going to run them through to the city when the tram is going. They want the patrons on the tram. So um, the buses have to turn around to go back. So this one, yeah, that's the Westfield. Um, and, you know, they've got their eyes on developing all this. Yeah. There's no kiss and ride, no park and ride, no nothing to access it. So let's just start with my other favourite. If I can find, oh, I just went past it. So this is the parking that is on the Woden parking map. It's on this virtual room for the CIT and the bus interchange. So, what was that? Oh, there's a hand, I think Pre. yeah. Pre, if you wanna say something, we'll get the chat back. Hang on, I can get the chat back. Oh yeah, there's one there. Will the Hellenic car, car, car park be multi-storey? Yes. That will be at least 16. Zone for it. We have to be a member. There's 50,000 members. And this is my thing that I'm starting to say about all those the clubs. When clubs were first given the concessional lease for the land, they were for cultural reasons, there's a lot of cultural sort of clubs, sporting clubs. 
they weren't to become the be all and end all of our community's life, that we are forced to go there because there's nothing outside much. Um, so what we wanna say is with the Atlantic Club, if the Southern Cross Club can open up with the snapper downstairs at the um, Yacht Club, why can't the Hellenic Club open up onto the street and create street life with their development? Um, so the parking, right? So, okay, so this here is the, where the CIT will be here. So that is that big car park, um, the public car park. That one's on the land release program at the moment. This one, I'm not sure that we're going to get um, much, we're gonna be able to have the 110 parks there because we've had to widen Callum Street to fit the tram and the, um, the buses in. That whole interchange has had to be widened. So I'm not quite sure what's gonna happen with that one. This one here on Wilbur Street is being developed into the towers. Remember that was going to be two 25-storey towers and a nine-storey one and a something else. And it's come down a bit to oh, around, we lost, we got eight and 10. It's come down to 15-ish, two towers of 15 and then a nine and a what have you. Um, so... You know, I mean, they do say that if it's a public car park, the development has got to replace the car parking. So, assumably, we wouldn't lose these 350 car parks to the public. <laughs> All of this is zoned for um, towers. Towers, 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 the whole thing. Um, I find this one interesting over here. So you've got long stay and short stay. So I guess my issue with Philip here, so you've got these long stay ones all day and you've got the short stay, one to four hours, that's where the KFC is and the Dan Murphy's, the op shop. So the thing though is, I don't know what they mean when they've got word and parking and they put it in the context of a virtual room for the CIT and the bus interchange. What are these things got to do with the CIT and the bus interchange? Because if you are a business around here, you need those car parks. Yeah, you don't want people to park there all day and go and get on the tram to go to town. Yeah, I'm sure they do. But, yeah, that's the last thing you want is park and ride when businesses need those car parks desperately. <laughs> a little bit of a hike over there to the tram. <laughs> yeah. This one here is turning into Wova, 120 car. Not sure that there's visitor parking or public parking in Wova. I don't recall that. In fact, I don't even think there's visiting parking for the residents, friends to come and visit because I remember thinking, oh, they've got a park in the Wilson's car park to visit somebody in Wova. That's what I remember thinking when I was looking at it, but I don't know. So this is all, you know, I can't, this won't be parking in the future. This Easty Street is all turned into the bus layover. Anyway, so I just, I don't know, I find, I don't understand, I'd like to ask somebody, Marissa, do you reckon you could follow up that parking map and 
find out what it really means and what is the future of parking in Woden. And, yeah, that would just be good to know. Yeah, it would be good to know what's going on with that. Um, so I'll just flick through some of these other. This is the, you know, the interchange. It's a funny one too. New pedestrian crossings, one right in the middle there. That would be a pedestrian crossing and there. But see, the thing is, if you've got over 100 buses an hour, I think it's even 200 buses an hour in the traffic modelling from all the suburbs coming in plus the rapids moving through. Um, <laughs> and that's why the buses can't actually stop. Um, what they do is they let you off. And then, they, and then they move on and they go to the layovers. We'll see them, the Eastie Street layover and the Phillip Oval layover because, because there's so much moving through here, you can imagine in peak hour, um, the buses can't stop and wait to pick you up. It's called head of queue too. Some of them are like, that bus has got to leave before that bus because, um, you know, they can't get out, the angles. And, one, and in the DA, it says, are you sure the bus won't hit the, um, the little frame, you know, the shelter? <laughs> Is there enough room for the shelter? It's very tight. Yeah. Over or under passes or something to get access. Well, I mean, there's going to be. And yes, you're right. And it is. And when people, so when you um, pull up on the tram and you want to go home, you have to get on over here. Or if you're coming in from some suburbs like Western Creek, I think, you end up over here on this side. So anyway, there's going to be a lot of movements through for people to get over to that side. Um, so with all the movements of people trying to get to both sides, that may, and the buses have got to stop to let all the people through, and you've got hundreds of buses trying to move through. Anyway, I just find it very busy and... Um, on your way home, like, so say, for example, you're coming in from the south, you hop off your bus there, you walk in here and you get on the tram. Okay, the trams in peak hour will be leaving every six minutes or so and off peak every 15 minutes or so. So you shouldn't have to wait too long um, to get one. But, you know, it all adds up. But when you're on your way home, you hop off your tram, then you go and stand over here, God forbid if it's night time and it's a bit um, cold and dark, I'm sure there'll be lighting, but you know, it is pretty dark that side. There's the, um, the drains, um, buses. You might have to wait a good half an hour or an hour for a bus to take you to your suburb. Um, anyway, it's just not ideal, the whole thing. Um, I guess there will be buildings over here in the future. And that's where I was saying that was, had car parks well it will be developed um they do want to put see over here is the youth center and they wanted to put the community center here i don't know what's happening with that but when we think about all the activity that's moving through here and it's not people sort of hanging around um you know eating and drinking and meeting each other it's just busy transport movements um so if they put the community center on this side on the east side, it's going to be disconnected from the rest of 
um, the plaza or the town centre. So we're a bit like, you know, bring the community centre over here onto this block, along with Rollo's Park, uh, <laughs> but bring it over to this side. So it's where the people are and where the activity is, because it's hard to see. I mean, you'd be better off having some public servant buildings over here or some towers or something um, and not trying to drag the activity across there. I don't know what would it, anyway, it, it really needs thinking because you will notice that Woden Town Park, which has got the drain and then it's called Arabanu Park, it's never really been active. It has never drawn people into it. Why would you go there? Like, um, if you want to go to a park, you go to Edison Park. Like, so how do we activate that? Now, one reason why people aren't drawn through there, that area, is because there's nothing at the other end of it. Like, you're not drawn to the hospital because there's no decent sort of um, shuttle bus or commuter cycles or anything that really connects the hospital to the town centre that draws you through to the hospital or some recreation facilities or something. One of the big problems, of course, is the fact that at the end of that park is a cemetery. It doesn't draw you to it, although Jude loves to have a walk in there. And I don't know why. Um, our master plan is not serving us well. It was done in 2014. It was released in 2015. So I was just fiddling around on the New South Wales planning site and they've got all these plans that are being redone. They're having a five-year refresh. Well, we need a refresh. We need more than a refresh. We need some good thinking. Woden has got so much potential. It is so central. Uh, it could be a great place that attracts the region to it and supports small business. Uh, and we can create jobs for everybody. But it really takes good governance and collaboration and planning. Yeah. You can see why they won't come because it's questions. <laughs> Marissa's here. Marissa's here. Will they? All right. Good. Yeah. All right. Well, I did. A, I've got a standing invite. Okay. I've got a standing invite. Like I said, could you come to our meeting? They're like, no. I've asked quite a number of times. Um, I think we could get better outcomes. <laughs> The bus is good. <laughs> Public transport in Pierce is not good. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's. Yeah. Well, you know what? My view is we could save the alignment, like dedicate the, get a dedicated alignment, because we did have one down Yarra Glen. But once you get to the um, Parliament House on the other side, you don't have a dedicated alignment anymore. So, buses on it until the future. Yeah, they want to put something down the centre of it. 
Well, the raising London circuit is what gets me because, um, you know, everywhere around Australia that, that I can see is, is quite a grade separate, you know, intersections are where most accidents happen because there's conflict in the network. So what everybody does is they do what's called a grade separation over passes and underpasses. And that allows the traffic to flow and it reduces the chance of accidents because you're not conflicted with each other. Yeah, and so the one at London Circuit where we've got this lovely grade separation <laughs> traffic to flow, we're getting rid of it and creating this massive mm, Yeah, it's going to force people into their cars, particularly tugging on people. You know, there's questions. Yes, the parking in town will be difficult. That will deter people from driving. But there's things like Western Creek, right? So they come out, they've got a rapid that runs into town, right? So they're beautiful rapid. It gets to the big mint interchange. That'll be a big interchange. Do they have to change onto the tram or does their bus get to carry through into town? Because we'll all be fucking riding up there to get on the bus in. <laughs> yeah, it'll be stuck in traffic. And that's not good public transport. <laughs> we'll suffer as well. Just, we just want, can we just think about it in the context of good public transport outcomes? It's more, it's thought about in the context of land development. That's what it's thought of. And, you know, there are some big buses coming. You look at Brisbane Metro, that is whopping big buses. They look like trams. In fact, I showed my dad one time because he's a tram man. And I said, look, Dad, look at that. He said, yeah, a tram. I said, no, it's a bus. <laughs> so, you know, you can get some pretty good looking buses and you can have them sidle up to platforms so that access is good, like... Um, There's a debate going on about the tram. Um, this is the problem with the hybrid meeting. People, they can't hear that. Um, Which directory is it? Sorry. I heard you. Um, what's this one? Post footpaths and existing footpaths, you know, like, you know, whatever. This is the tram. Proposed light rail extension to Mawson being investigated. See, that's been talked about for a while. That, Caroline, um, that was what, a couple of years ago that that was announced, like, yeah, so it's part of the October 2019, 2020, yeah, I remember the election, um, 20, October 20, so that's, um, where are we, like, you know, if you're going to do it, and the reason why that is really important if that is our future, how does that fit in with the duplicated Athlon Drive? Because you'll see an image of Athlon Drive being duplicated through Philip and down through Athlon Drive. There's no tram in that picture of the duplicated Athlon Drive. What about the cycleway? Where does that go? What about Yarralumla Creek? Are we going to be able to do anything good with that?
is it going to be one of those things that they just tell us like or do we get to say hang on a sec there, there's you know other outcomes aside from tram there's environment and there's social amenity through that corridor that's the main corridor through Woden um, between Southlands and the plaza how could we make that really fantastic for the communities around Yeah, like most things, when you assess an economic assessment of a project, um, one of the first things looked at is travel time savings. And maybe that's one reason why ours doesn't get talked about that much, because one of the main indicators of um, upgrading infrastructure, transport infrastructure, is your travel time. It would be good to have some flexi hubs in Woden. So those people that don't want to stay at home, because some people um, live by themselves and they do want to go to the office. So it would be good to be able to go to one in Woden, your local. Um, and so you could do local things. You could get your exercise if you had your pool and your basketball or your indoor sports and you could slip over and do your bit of exercise and then go home and, and stay local would be good. That was the idea of the town centres. Yeah. Yep. 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 Well, I don't understand really why you don't come the buses in under the CIT or just there. I, I still don't like the CIT on that spot. It's just cold. But anyway, in there and back out and head south again because. The buses have to come in here. They can't turn around, right? So they have to come over here to this Launceston Street bus layover at, um, at the Phillip Oval. They have to lay over there and wait for their next run. And then they come back across the train path. Now there's gonna be so many things crossing the train path. Cross that, head back down here, stop quickly, pick your people up and then head back south again. Or the other movement is you come up here, your bus, you drop your people off, you head up here, you turn right across the tram path, up here, getting all these new traffic lights. You turn right down here, you wait here, you lay over at the East East Street bus layover. And then when it's time to pick up your passengers, you come down here, you do a UE around the um, little roundabout there. And if you live there, you're really unhappy. And then you come back down here. So these are empty bus movements running around, Come back up here, back down here, and back into the interchange to pick up your passenger. That's how I think the bus movements work, but nobody will come and tell us that we're going to have all these empty buses running around in order to turn around. Well, this has been planned, like they're building the thing. Like, can't they come and tell us how the buses turn around? Um, 
Uh, just a couple of things here. Chris says the last time that they reviewed the and revised the master plan 2014, it ended up worse than the previous one in 2006. It did. The 2006 one or 2004 one is way better than the one we've got now. I agree, Chris. Any underpasses planned for pedestrians crossing there? Are no overpasses shown? Nope, I have not ever seen an overpass or underpass. Pre, do we know how the master plan relates to the new district plan? Does this supersede the master plan? If so, is that where we focus our efforts to address these issues? Um, it's not really clear how the master plan and the um, new district level plan will interact. You know, Marissa? I thought that was the legislation that was getting released. Like these are the next levels down underneath it all. Yeah. Uh, the last I heard was that the district level plans would be statutory. So our current master plan is not. It's a policy document. You don't have to abide by it. Um, but it gets converted into the territory plan and we have a precinct code um, there. The what are, Ours is called the Phillip Town Centre, whatever it's called. Um, anyway, so they said the new district level plans will be statutory. So they'll be law. So they've got to be good. Because once they're law... Um, so anyway, that's the, um, the bus network. Uh, let's see. That's just the Philip Oval layover. I think that's most of the. What is that one with those green peas? Are they parking? Car parking. Oh well. I think that um, Westfield are going to develop their structured car park. Anyway, we'll find out next month. Um, so that's, you know, that's about all we know. So what we want to do is we've got some principles that we've started. Actually, we want to um, refresh things up a bit, the community council. Um, we've got a new logo that we're working on. It's actually a stylized image of the Margul Hinda um, statue in the town square. And it's going to have a little heart in it and it will look like things are connected to it. That's our, what our new logo will look like if we can get that together. And then uh, we'll issue some principles about having, um, you know, people-focused planning that's inclusive of, you know, all people, all people, ages, backgrounds, diversity, um, all that stuff. And, um, you know, we want active streets, we want blah, 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 you know, be... A, when, when developing, like, say, for instance, the Planet Club wants to develop that car park, well, here's some principles, you know, does it meet, like, these things that we're after? Um, sort of just to focus things a bit. And then we'll have to work on, um, we're working with the SLA. They've been very good, Suburban Land Agency, on that block, the big one between the, um, the Hellenic Club and the car park and the, the Grand Central. My only concern with that is... is you know, while they're being very good and consultative, I don't know, if, if you sell it to the private sector, they're not going to put, they're not going to be that wrapped about putting community facilities on that don't make any money. They want things that make money. So while we might be able to get some cafes or some, something active on the ground floor, maybe, um, you know, it's even a battle for that. So, for example, the... Um, The, there's Chris, I have to move on. The W2 that's on the town square, that's primarily um, residence car park on the ground floor. There's a veneer of commercial around it. So it's a missed opportunity to have like a um, Verity Lane where you've got the whole thing open with food and drink and people spilling out and moving through. So that's a shame. I'm going to repeat Chris's comment. Time to move on. Anybody have any comments? We need to be able to hear them on the microphone. If you do. So that that. Oh. 
can have an early mark today. We have got so much material about what goes on. Um, got lots of images about the zoning, the towers, the loss of facilities. There's heaps, but we've just got to sort of pull it together into our own plan, I think, to try and put forward to um, the government to see if we can influence the district level plan to make us more of a social and commercial hub and innovative and look after, uh, you know, but a CIT, like why is the CIT limited to 12, what is it, 22 and a half thousand square metres? Um, no, I'm not suggesting that we just keep going up and up and up, but are we looking, these are the questions, are we looking at the AIE, that Academy of Interactive Entertainment that's in Watson? Can they come and run some classes from over here? Because to get to Watson is a real hike um, for kids that want to do that gaming stuff. It would be great to have that here. We've got a youth foyer on the ground floor. What does that mean? Um, the UC, why can't they come and run some classes over here? We've got the major, we've got the biggest hospital in Southeast New South Wales. We've got the tertiary hospital for Southeast New South Wales. Bring some of the education over here to go with it. Um, anyway, there's lots of things that we can look at, which we have been looking at. Anyway, it's a matter of trying to find a way to take it for, look, we're not the only ones struggling. Every, a lot of other places are struggling with um, the, the development of, oh, the Inner South is struggling with the development of the Inner South. Um, they've got the same issues with the densification along the corridor, densifying a lot of the inner south. They're very upset about it, a lot of them. A lot of them don't want the tram. Some do. Um, the tram is very polarising. So it's just how do, you, how, do you, how do you get the collaboration amongst all the government areas and the community to be able to discuss the issues and work something out because we've not managed it for the recent decades. Mm. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it does need a refresh um, and, yeah, things have moved on, things have changed and we need a refresh. Can't help myself. I don't know what happened to the Zoom. Are they still there? So I am very aware of the conversation. It's I don't know how to manage conversations and that thing. It doesn't work very well, does it? Oh, well. Sorry. Um, we're still here. Good kiss. I think I'm frozen. I'm frozen. Oh, well, that must be a sign. <laughs> Marissa, do you want to have, your, have a say about what's going on in your world? Yeah, talking to that. Yeah, I, I don't have too much to report. I've been going through annual reports at the moment. So all the different committees have been asking different questions on different 
Um, so that's been um, and we had an inquiry that I've been involved with on the JAPS committee into corrections, community corrections, um, and also to the electoral around lowering the voting age, and that was a very interesting um, inquiry and debate. Um, the Environment Committee has a uh, a inquiry happening on environmental volunteerism. So there may be some people here who would like to, um, you know, make a submission or have some input into that. And that's really about understanding how we can better engage volunteers in the ACT and around different community activities, I guess. So looking at some of the challenges with that and also some, you know, the um, there. And yeah, I think there's a um, food and fiber strategy um, that's just been released to look at how um, I, I think there's about 90% of our food in the ACT comes from interstate or our fresh fruit and vegetables. So how we can look to reduce the emissions that come from bringing all that produce in and how we could perhaps grow our own. Um, so that's one of, that's uh, um, open for consultation at the moment, um, which you can have your input in. I think that's about it that I can think of off the top of my head, but if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer and um, yeah, thank you. Any questions for Marissa? I haven't got any room in their backyard. <laughs> And again, it's the balance, finding the balance there between densification and urban sprawl, basically. So, yes, that's the balance. Like we're not just the ACT, so there's a lot of projects grown just outside our borders that and supporting the Pacific region, I guess, and that's part of the strategy because it all ultimately you know is growth and will um, reduce emissions ideally. That's yeah. 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 That was actually one of the issues that came up in uh, one of the hearings that I was in in terms of the Murray Darling Basin. Um, negotiations and basically we are negotiating with New South Wales around water rights because yeah we we um uh yes yeah, in the future or if the future out, it's where do we get our water from and uh, while things are very good at the moment we need to have strategies for the future and to you know water security is critically important so um, yeah, there's a full uh, water strategy that part of that is negotiating with other states around water rights. Yeah. We can help you. Well, we need a champion that will champion 
be a champion and then we can support it. So if you want to be the champion of the garden. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 